Hey, it's Courier Girl here. Like my hat? I got it from a great place called Drivers to Drivers, and they are all about helping drivers communicate with each other, collaborate, and they do this really cool podcast. And last month, they had me on their podcast, and I didn't tell you about it because I got really busy, and I wanted to upload the entire episode for you, so... I'm going to show you that in just a minute, but I just wanted to let you know that this is a great company. They're really working hard to bring drivers together. They've got some cool stuff going on. I'm going to link their YouTube channel and their website below. It's drivers to drivers.com, just like it says on my hat. So yeah, so enjoy the podcast and let me know in the comments what you think. Good morning and welcome to Drivers to Drivers, a podcast series built by drivers for drivers. It's a podcast series that talks about all things delivered. And in today's episode, we are joined by Courier Girl. Courier Girl has a uh, pretty big following on YouTube. She talks about how she started in the courier field, what it's like on a day-to-day, -day, pitfalls, ins and outs. She's got some great content on her channel. She also has a second channel where she talks about business. She has a business background. And uh, I think as couriers, we can learn a lot in regards to that aspect as well. Some things that we may not have as a strong suit um, and some things that uh, we may not be thinking about because we're working as couriers. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Courier Girl, as well as our co-host Tom McGrath and Michael Manning. Hello. Good morning, Courier Girl. Hey. Hey. How are you? Welcome. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Glad to talk to you all. Ex excellent. Excellent. Yes. Yes. Thank you for joining us today. I know uh, schedules are are pretty crazy. Uh, they're they're always hectic. Always always changing. You gotta you gotta go where the deliveries are. Funny how that works, isn't it? Can we just... Yeah. I want to introduce you. I know we've we've chatted via email. I want to introduce you to Tom McGrath. He's on here as well. Unfortunately, Michael couldn't make it. His daughter is in the process of having a baby, so he had to to split today. But uh, Tommy's here. Tommy's he's doing a different. He's over doing a different thirty plus years. He's doing a different delivery. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he's kind of watching. Well, he's hopefully, not he's not delivering doing anything. That, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, I yeah, I hope not. But hopefully, it goes well for him. So I do have Tom McGrath here. He's he's been in the courier industry for over thirty years, if not long time. More. Long time. And uh, yeah, back before there were any apps or Did it freeze? even probably pagers, right? Yeah. What's that? I just asked if it, if it froze because I was having a little trouble. It, it did. It did. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it does. With the studio, it may seem like your picture's frozen or our picture's frozen, but in the background, it does automatically upload and it, it transitions and smooths the video. So it, it's, the quality of the podcast video and and whatnot is uh, much different than the actual recorded. Yeah, Jeremy right. does a lot of editing with the magic behind the buttons on this thing, <laughs> so that'll be cool. So oh, it does it itself, but yeah. So Maria, like, it was very nice to meet you. Thanks for coming out. Or thanks for joining us. Like Jeremy said, I've got some time in here, and what we wanted to do, or what we're doing is we're talking with drivers all over the country and we're sharing ideas and information and just uh, building that network of drivers. I looked at a lot of the apps out there, Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Postmates, Live, Roadie, Pickup, Grubhub, and I didn't find any of them that I felt was really for the driver, if you will. So we started the, the Rover anyway for the drivers and then this podcast kind of spun out of that to say it'll be a good opportunity for us to reach out to each other, support each other, give each other tips, ideas, finance information, gas prices, maintenance on your vehicles, insurance, all those different things that everybody's faced with individually. So I did it a number of years ago with another company that I own and we were pretty successful with it. I hired a lot of smarter people than myself and they came in and 
and you know pointed the way how to do things correctly. But if let me let me ask a few questions and then we can just kick it around for a little bit. But can you give me a little bit right. of background, Maria, about you, about yourself and how you started? Okay, I did not actually start as a courier. I have my background is like admin, accounting, office stuff, business ownership, all of that stuff, and. After 30 plus years of doing that, I was really burnt out and tired of being in an office, tired of the corporate life. And then I had some health issues and I just realized I can't sit in front of a computer anymore. And I was at the point where I was helping in a family business. I was kind of helping my dad retire. We all wanted him to and he wasn't doing it. And finally, when he did, I found myself <laughs> saying, what am I going to do? He was 90. He was still right. running his business. And we're like, Dad, you got to go. And wow. He's actually still running it, but he's only got a few customers now. So a friend of mine who's done this for probably his whole life, pretty much, said, why don't you come out and drive for a while? And I thought, well, that'll be a nice change. And so I started with what's yeah. called a bank route. And I was just picking up receipts from lockboxes at the end of the day. And I thought I could do this. It was nice. It was easy. I was driving out in the country, which I like. And so after that, I just kind of got addicted. And for a while there, I was working seven, seven days a week, like 14, 15 hours a day, just because it was so much fun. It was so different. But finally, my body said no. <laughs> so I had to settle into more of a routine. I have not done the gig economy stuff at all. I've worked for different courier companies, and I actually work with a broker who brokers for larger companies. A lot of people don't know that people do that. You have your big national companies, and they don't have an office in every city. They will broker with smaller companies. And sometimes I think you can get a better deal that way because it's more personal, and they have fewer drivers, so they care more about the ones they have because they want to keep them. I don't know. That's been my experience. Yeah. So I've been doing this almost yeah. two years now, like two years next week. Excellent. Yeah. It's funny you say that you got addicted to it because when I started, I had a couple of different businesses prior to doing courier work and one was in the restaurant and then I was in developing, we did construction before I got into doing the courier work. But like you said, I was 24 seven, I was picking up TWA bank stuff at two in the morning. It can go around the clock and you can keep making money if you can keep working, like you said, but right. you're burning both ends of the candle. So, but It's definitely a short, you short term thing. I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah. So right in the Midwest. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Great spot. So that Triangle City, we, I, I've done business out there with a number of current companies as well. It's a great area. So in you're doing bank routes still, or, or what other routes, what other pickups? And can you tell us anything about well, the any bank route that I did? This was, this was the bank route. They finally went electronic, so they didn't need receipts anymore. They were like the last bank in the area to modernize. So that went away after a couple months. But I've done hospital stuff. I've done mail routes, auto parts, just one-offs where I would go pick stuff up and take it. Most of the stuff that I do is within probably a hundred miles, but I've gone farther sometimes too. Probably the funniest delivery that I did was I got a call from, it was a hospital, I guess. And I had to pick up a set of teeth because they had, <laughs> they had like transported the patient to the care facility, but they forgot his teeth. So that was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And then one time I got a run one time I got a run that they said it was a box truck run and, and I've got a minivan. So I got there and I'm like, are you sure I can take this? It says box truck. Because sometimes you can, sometimes they don't know. And the lady looks at me and she goes, I don't know what you're talking about. It's a piece of paper. They forgot to take the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I can fit that. Yeah. Right. Get my forklift, yeah. right? Right. Maria, how are the gas prices in Ohio? Much well, gas Kentucky's cheaper than Ohio. And being in Cincinnati, I'm right on the border of Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio. And I do a lot of work in Kentucky right. throughout the day. So 
I just get gas down there, and I'm getting it without fuel rewards for about three thirty-five right now. And I am a person who will, I use my fuel rewards, I use a cashback credit card, I try to stack it as much as possible. Right, right. And, uh, yeah, it can go a long way. Yeah. yeah. And after doing it for a couple of years, how many miles do you think you're putting on annually on your vehicle? Last year, I put 89,000 on, and okay. I don't know this year. I want to say so far, probably 60, 50 to 60 so far this year. Yeah, yeah. That's so, and right and I have I have a minivan, and it's it's a Chevy City Express, which is the same as a Nissan NV two hundred, and it gets like thirty one miles to the gallon. So, I'm luckier than a lot of people. Oh, wow! And I chose Perfect. this yeah, no, Harley no for that reason. Yeah, that's great. How have you found the uh, maintenance on that? Well. I, I'm like a maintenance fanatic. In my <laughs> earlier life, I drove more than a couple junk cars and it was always really scary. In fact, when I got my first new car after driving a bunch of junk cars, I was scared to death that the brakes wouldn't work for six months. And it was a new car just because of having so many bad cars. So I get it maintained all the time. I have a really good relationship with the mechanic that I go to. It's a local person. It's not a yeah. franchise or a chain, and he really takes care of me, and I love that. Like, I can call him, and I'm like, I'm pulling into the pit, and he just laughs. <laughs> so he, he takes care of me. And, like, even stuff like oil changes, I go to him because he looks at everything. So right. I've never right. had any – this man has been great, actually. I've put, huh. I've put almost 200,000 miles on it so far. And I got it. Yeah. It'll be two years in November. Wow. Yeah. And for other drivers out there, what could they expect to spend on maintenance like for that annually? Or what would you tell them? If I would have known you would have asked that, I would have would have had a <laughs> I would have had him print it out. The first year I had it, I spent just over three thousand dollars. <laughs> and I don't know what I'm at this okay. year. I've put two sets of tires on it. I just put my second set of tires on it. I find that if you get them rotated regularly and just have it, have it checked to make sure you're not out of alignment. My tires lasted over 100,000 miles. And, but they're also rated for this van. So when I said I needed new tires, mm -hmm. they didn't really give me a choice. They just said, these are the ones for this van because it can hold, I think a 1500 pound payload because of the tires and because of the way the van is. So yeah, about 100,000 miles. I just put a starter on it, and I've got 226,000 miles on this van. So I got it. It had 70,000. So whatever the difference is. But other than that, it hasn't really needed anything. No. Oh, and I get my, my oil Pretty changed every 5,000 miles like clockwork. Bingo. So... Wow, every 5,000? Yep, that's what they told me to do, and it's like every two and a half to three weeks. And I don't know, that's just something that I do, and then I get my tires rotated every other oil change. So I don't know, that's just what they told me to do, that's what it does. It comes out almost as clean as it went in, but I figure my van will last longer. A lot of people don't get this, but you know, yeah. when you're driving, your vehicle is, is a piece of equipment. If you had a manufacturing company and you had a piece of equipment, you would maintain it because that's your money. But people, when it's like their car, they don't think about that. They're like, oh, it's my car and I'm doing deliveries and I'm driving. And they don't give it the same consideration they would if they paid $50,000 for a piece of equipment at a manufacturing facility. No, I think part of the issue out there, Maria, is everybody gets paid whenever, at the end of the week or whenever you get paid. and it's check to check week to week so they're not putting that money aside for those new tires or that oil change and it's a tough it's a tough grind if you're in that boat and right. what we're trying to do is help them understand the way the way you're doing it because life is so much nicer <laughs> the way you're doing it because well you know, time is money and if you're broken down on the side of the road that's money that's right. And probably because I come from an accounting background, I think that way. But I always put 
10% of my paycheck aside for maintenance and upgrades and anything that I might need. And if I don't spend that money, then I have that money. And if I have a big repair, then I'm glad that I have that money. And I know a lot of people can't do that, but then that gets into the whole, are you living above your means or whatever? That's a whole different subject. <laughs> That is a, that's a great point to, to, to point out is setting aside that money. I guess, even as a, as a courier, if you're living job to job, but you, if you don't set aside that money, those funds to maintain the thing that's, that's making you money, then it's going to go from making that money job to job to not having any jobs because you don't have the utilities that you need to to do the job. So that is, that's a, I think a great piece of advice right there is like find out what percentage you need to put aside every, even if you do it every job and just have that automatically done ahead of time so you can prepare. Right. And another thing to consider, and I've, I've actually done videos about this is the difference between on demand and gig work and route work. And I always tell people, if you can get at least some route work, so that you know what you've got coming in each week for that route, that gives you the stability and then you can fill in your income with the gig economy stuff or on-demand stuff because you don't know what you're going to make when you're doing that. You could make $200 in a day, you can make $50 in a day, you can make $10. Yeah, great advice. Right. Great advice. Yeah. And Maria, you said you're not doing the gig economy, <coughs> excuse me, the app. I think those are the apps that you're referring to. Is there a reason why you're staying away from those? I'm too busy. I mean, they, I, I have a morning route that starts at 4.30 That's and goes at 10.30. And I have a, a second route that goes from like noon to six or seven at night and I'm done. So it just, it just hasn't happened. Awesome. Right, right. What do you think of those? The, the gig economy or the app-based work? I'm intrigued by them. Sometimes I have this dream to just like take off in my van and travel over the country and just make a living that way. And I've heard good and I've heard bad about a lot of different ones. So I don't know. You, you don't know until you do it, right? So I am intrigued and so at some point I might try them out. Go ahead. So if you watch, if you watch one of the videos we did, the podcast we did with another gentleman, he was out in Wyoming in a Walmart parking lot, picking up some work there. And he's doing exactly what you just described. And he's driving around the country, mm -hmm. checking it out. It was an interesting podcast and he was Ronald. Really, Ronald, yeah. was just, Ronald was wicked interesting. And I think, uh, you know, that information, sharing that information amongst the community, if you will, will help us navigate this better. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it is intriguing. I agree with you that, I mean, years ago, like you said, we never had any of that stuff years ago. So this opens up all new doors for us and uh, is trying to maximize what the drivers can get and, and keep earn and keep, if you will, at the end of the day. And I think you're kind of like the, the poster person for maintaining the vehicle. This is how you do it. And I think that comes from your background, your accounting background. So. <clears throat> We had another podcast, a gentleman who was talking about Dave Ramsey. I don't know if you've ever heard of Dave Ramsey. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it was just trying to get those financial, what do you call it? Exercises in place for everybody. You get so your financial a routine. Right. 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 Which is extremely important all around. But yeah. Right. In, uh, another thing that I talk to people about is the mileage logs. I don't, I, I know people that don't even keep their mileage. Like that's crazy. Yeah. Nuts. I know it's a gift. That's a gift. That's the only tax write off on the IRS books that you don't have to account for every penny, your mileage write off. And whether it was 40 cents, right. 50 cents, 60 cents a mile and it floats, but they're not holding you to it. So when you drive a hundred thousand miles, and it's 50 cents, you write off 50 grand and nobody questions it. So that's a gift and, and you're 100% right. We should all be 
especially with the new 87,000 IRS agents going to be added to the doles over there. We should get those logs in, in order, like you said. <laughs> so Right. And mm. take that tax deduction because um, it's a huge difference in what you pay in taxes. Yes, definitely. I mean, when I did my when I did this for the first few years, I ended up getting I had a couple of babies, I ended up getting earned income credit checks because I had such tax write offs and it was just a gift. So and then most people are that don't do it and don't file and don't understand it. They're nervous. They're afraid. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm in trouble. I didn't have to file taxes in, in a few years, three years, four years, five years. And it's like, no, it's not that bad. If you do it, if you do it right, the way you just explained it, it's really not that. You're in a better position than if you were a W-2 employee for the most part. Would you say that or what do you think? Oh, most definitely. Because last year when I did, no, yeah, 2021, when I did my taxes, according to my tax return, I'm under the poverty level because of all that mileage deduction, but I made a nice living. Yes. And so I don't, I don't, I think maybe I paid like, it was less than a thousand dollars in taxes for sure. And I'm like, wow, I, I mean, I did the miles. I'm honest about it. I would never, I, I'm not like the government. I am honest, but <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was, that's another piece right it was just it was it's a lot of money piece. that you can take off right yeah yeah, yeah. so that's very important you, so you started to ask me a question what was that i'm sorry you, you had started sorry, to ask me a question said, and yeah. i i said you started to ask me a question and i talked over you yeah no, I was going to ask you what you think, uh, like the future, if you had your wish list of the future, what would you like on uh, on the courier side, on your delivery route? I mean, if you were to break it up and say, I've learned, here's what I've learned. These are the lessons I've learned over the past, and this is what I think I'd share with other drivers. Okay. Don't get too comfortable where you're at. Even if you're working with great people, always have your ears open and your eyes open to see if there's other opportunities out there. And I would say stick with stuff because some couriers are such job hoppers. They're here a week, there a week, that they just don't stay and they never get a good reputation because of that. Or they try to cut corners. So I don't cut corners and I recommend that people don't cut corners, but learn to be as efficient as you can on your route because you might be able to take a six hour route and turn it into a five hour route. If you know, you get comfortable with it, you know what you're doing, if you can switch stops up or whatever. Now some companies get real mad about that, but other companies don't, so you have to know all that. Do good work and get a good reputation and keep your ears and eyes open for other opportunities because you, over time, may not have the best opportunity anymore. I, one of my, I guess shortfalls is I care too much about the people, like the customer. And so I have one particular job that I've been doing for a long time and money-wise it's probably not the best, but I like the people so I've stuck with it. And my own advice to myself would be not to do that, I think. To be a little bit more aggressive. Oh. Those are excellent tips. Those are, you're like spot on. <laughs> when I look at yeah, that's phenomenal. Yeah, <clears throat> because when I would think of we were gypsies, we were jumping from job to job when we were out there hustling, trying to move and, and look for work, because those carry companies would lose business and would go to another company, and you try to chase it. No, the advice that you gave is spot on. I couldn't echo it more. I think that's a very important for the other drivers to understand, especially new drivers coming in to see what you've done and how you've kind of built your business right. and really looked at it that way as, as opposed to the employee independent contract issue. Are you an employee? Are you an independent contract? And that's a whole other segment. But if you approach it the way you've described, I think that's like, should be a textbook 101 career. This is how you do it from, from maintaining a vehicle to, I don't know. I, I think I'm with you, Maria, on the part of uh, caring a little bit too much about and, and not being so aggressive. Cause I guess I could be guilty of that as well with you. And I think that rounds you and I out a little bit on that side of it. 
It could be wrong, but no. So Michael joined us. I can see that. Michael, do we have a new baby? Not yet. Grandpa? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> what came in half hours right, in? Oh, God. Oof. Having a baby makes uh, Marie, you... this is Michael. Michael, also. Hi, Michael. Nice Sorry? to meet you. Having a baby <laughs> makes you realize how not in control of life you are. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that is very true. Yes. Yeah. So. That. Mike, Michael and I drove together. That's one thing I've learned for sure. Years ago, Maria. So we go way back. The way back time machine. This gray That's hair awesome. on our heads is showing it. Showing our age, <laughs> but yeah, but making those connections to those friends over the years has been, yeah, long time. So, Maria, what what else do you want to share with some of the other drivers out there that that could be approaching this thing? I mean, you've already given awesome advice and great tips on that. So, do you balance it with your social life? What are you doing on the social side of things outside of driving? I am a workaholic, so I don't do a whole lot. And my kids are grown and they all scattered at different ends of the earth. So, and my parents are older, so I do stuff with family, but I'm just, and I've, and I've always got other businesses going on the side too. So I don't just drive and I'm very entrepreneurial. So I, I do want to say two things though. One is about the difference between an employee mindset and an entrepreneur mindset. And I think if people are working a regular job and they go to do this on the side, they still have that employee mindset. And once you can get into thinking like an entrepreneur, you see so many more opportunities. So that's one thing that I encourage people to do. And the other thing, it's a big question that I get a lot is, what kind of vehicle should I have? And I'm like, start with what you have, because number one, you don't even know if you're gonna like this enough to do it all the time. And number two, you don't know what vehicle is right for the job, but you need to different vehicle if you're just doing lab specimens than you do if you're doing truckloads of office supplies. So start with what you have and then upgrade later once you decide you're going to do the job and once you have a better feel for what you need. Yeah, spot on, spot on. And, and That's great, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. The, the, the only thing I'd add to that would be something, I started this and I was just married, so fairly young, but it was getting into that routine of how much money can you make a week? Because as you said earlier, you don't know if it's a hundred bucks, 50 bucks or 10 bucks. So if you can get right. yourself into a routine of saying, okay, this week I made X, next week I made X again, next week I made X again, and get that momentum before you go spending any money on anything from insurance to the auto, to the car, to the everything, just find out if you can get into a habit of a routine of starting to grow that revenue source. I think you're right on the money. Right. That's one way I've done it. Yeah. Set those. And don't set think that goals. because you have one great week, every week's going to be that way. <laughs> no kidding. That's the truth. Yeah. I can still remember my great week 35 years ago that I made like, Thirteen hundred dollars, and I'm like, Yahoo! <laughs> it was like, because the normal week would have been like five or six hundred or seven hundred, and that was that was fleeting. That was very fleeting, but <laughs> I couldn't budget on that anyway. So, so can I ask you cool. guys a question? Please, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, do you think, having been in it this as long as you have, that? You can make more money today or less money today because I feel like there's so much more competition today. Mm. And it seems like co companies are trying to put the squeeze on drivers. So I'm just curious. <laughs> yep. I, I think you're on that. You know what? I and no, go, go ahead, Tom. Go I was ahead, just going to say, I'll let you start. I think there's more opportunity today to make more money than ever before. We didn't have this technology 30 years ago, so we couldn't expand the way you are thinking about as an entrepreneur and getting out there. There's a huge opportunity to make a lot of money because I think of it this way. We didn't go to school. This is a job of hard knocks. 
We didn't go to school to be a courier. We didn't go to Harvard or Yale to be a courier. So, but I think we can take the, the, the pay that couriers have gotten in the past and they've been held down and depressed because of all this overhead from courier companies or other companies squeezing. You've got Amazon squeezing these guys at three bucks a delivery. And I'm saying, I know what Jeff's worth and Jeff's got to pay a lot more money. So we got to get together to get the money. And it should be, maybe it's nine bucks a delivery, not three bucks a delivery. And then everybody's making money because as you just stated, right. you like everybody else. And when I, when we did it, we're considered poverty level. Although we may, can make a good living and get the right tax off, we are considered a poverty level. I've got a mission in my life to help drivers out, to make drivers make more money than ever before. And I think we can do that together if we all come together because since COVID, the Delivery space is on fire. The, the, everything has been delivered. Everything is getting delivered. And we have huge opportunities. And what I think we need to do is get a little organized on what we spend our money on. If we all bought our tires together and our batteries together and we did things together and, and without price setting, but we could get twice what everybody's making right now just by taking the inefficiencies out of the system between dispatch, customer service, waiting for money, all that stuff is ancient history. That's dinosaurs. They're living with fax machines. My daughter sent me a video the other day that I shared with these guys, and it was a comedian up in Phoenix, Arizona, and he did a, a ride share, and the vehicle pulled up without a driver. And he videoed the whole thing. He's like, all right, I'm getting into this car. There's no driver. It's a ride share. So the future is here. We're here. A lot of those companies don't want to embrace the future because they make money. All those companies make 10, 20, 30, 40, 50% off of your, your work. And I'm saying we right. don't need to do that with the technology today. We don't need to do that. We can give you the money you can and use the technology. And, and, and it's exactly what you just said a minute ago, Maria. You care. So you have a good customer relationship with those customers. So. That's the most important thing that we want to boil it down to. Get you and those customers together and get everybody else out of the way. And then there's where the opportunity runs. And those customers will pay you more. When I was explaining to courier companies that they'll put tips on, they'll tip the drivers. Couriers were like, no, oh, they're not going to tip. They're trying to pay the least as possible. I'm like, yeah, because they're so aggravated with the system that you guys have set up. Now you're telling them the driver's on the way and there's no driver even around. So it's, it's clearing all that out, getting the communication open, pull the curtain back, and we can really transform the last mile. And that's what we're looking to do. Sorry, I'll get off my soapbox. I love that idea. <laughs> <laughs> so together we can do it. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's great. And I do think. I do think that like you, like you said, Tommy, the past two years have changed that the pandemic has changed the mindset quite a bit. And I don't think it's just, I think it started with the office space where companies realize, Hey, we really don't need a brick and mortar building to survive and they can save money. I think the same thing about the delivery space, it really exploded what can be delivered or what actually what actually should be delivered or can be delivered because now you have like all all these restaurants all these stores local stores small businesses that are turning to a local last mile delivery and there are companies different companies i know walmart's trying to start up one one there but there are platforms out there for couriers to to build their own business and be successful and capture as much of that as possible so I think, I think it's better now than it's ever been. Let me just jump in. One definitely thing. An We're exciting just time. To finish on the, mm -hmm. uh, let, let me just jump in one more thing. I just wanted to say, because I see a lot of the gig economy or the platforms or working out of uh, crowdsourcing and that crowdsourcing, in my opinion, not everybody can do this. I mean, I, when we were doing it, I would invite other friends of mine to say, Hey, come on, try this. And they wouldn't last two hours. They're like, no, nah, there was traffic. I couldn't find the address. The guy was, the dispatcher was yelling at me. Screw that. I don't want to do that. So it's not for everybody. 
I mean, it clearly, but for the ones that want to do it, if we can, we can kind of get together and clean that out because there's a difference when you throw the package on the grass when it's raining out down the street, when I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it in the door. I'm going to do this. So the crowdsource drivers have kind of given us a little bit of a bad rap, if you will. And we've got to shed right. the difference between companies, companies that want to do crowdsource and companies that want to have, and I don't call us professional, I call us experienced because I don't wear a suit and tie, but we're experienced. We know what we're doing. We know how to take care of it. We know how to do auto parts. We know how to do flowers. We know how to do lab work. We know how to do prescriptions. Just we've done it and, and we do it with, with, that's what we like to do. And it's not for everybody, but I think there's 500,000 of us that we can handle, we can take on the United States together and deliver the last mile and just finish the last mile so it's no longer an issue. So. What a great idea. Yeah. I, I talk too much. At the price that's deserved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. But yeah. I'll add that there are so many people that jump into it and pick up something from a restaurant and bring it down the street. But then when there's a route with 30 stops, that's like mind boggling to them. And they'll go and look at it and say, I can't do that. Yeah. And I think some people for the most part that, that are in that position, they're, they're coming from maybe like a nine to five job trying to do something on the gig economy where they want to pick up and drop off, pick up and draw on demand, right. not, not routed. And they, they may don't have the mindset to mm -hmm. click into that. Right. And when I first did my very first route, like my big route that I did, it took me nine hours to do it the first couple of days. And I was so confused. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was for a hospital. So it was like hospitals, doctor's offices, stuff like that. But just two weeks in, I already had it down to seven hours. And it's just a matter of getting mm. used to it. And you really get in the groove and then it's easy where it can be totally overwhelming at first. And mm -hmm. so I do tell people that if you're new and it's overwhelming, stick with it because it's going to get a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And my friend who does that route now, he can get it done in five hours. So big difference. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, after, and along that gig economy work, the food delivery, if I'm going to be delivering McDonald's or Dunkin' Donuts or something, there's just no way you can make any money. And no wonder the guy's taking a couple of French fries and a sip of Coke because he's broke before he gives mm -hmm. it to Right. It's like, what do they expect? It's, 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 you know, well, they, 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 some they of think, those, the base pay is so go ahead, little. Maria, sorry. Some yeah. of those, because I've yeah. looked at these apps, even though I haven't really done it, and you're getting a couple bucks for a delivery. And I don't know, it just seems like sometimes the quality of the people you're delivering to or the parts of town you're delivering to or the, the circumstances, I don't know, it kind of turns me off sometimes. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 No, I, it does. I think we got to, you can't be touching anything. I remember we were dealing with the company and they were looking at us to do deliveries. And I was saying that the minimum is 25 bucks. And they came back and they said, these other companies came in at eight, $8, eight dollars a delivery. I'm like, you, you can't do that. You just can't do that. And they went with them and then they, completely had the service complaints, no drivers. Mm -hmm. It was just like they're right. throwing this money at this problem and then that's, that's not the solution. So we got to have some standards, if you will, and the expenses out there of keeping your vehicle up and running. Those, that's real money. Mm -hmm. So we can't do it for nothing. Yeah. So cool. I don't know. Any, I think this has been awesome. I think like your textbook 101, you're perfect to get, this is awesome. So it'll be really good for other drivers, especially starting out to see that. And, and I'll tell you, Maria, when Michael and I were driving, Laurie, she was the only woman that I knew driving in Boston. And now I see oh, all wow. women and I love it. I think, yeah, <laughs> and, and just to see it all transform and transition over, it's like, that's fantastic. Hey, you mentioned you got a couple of kids. How old are your kids? Where are they? What, what's that like? 
Well, my youngest one is in her 30s, so. And then the older ones are <laughs> late 30s, early 40s. Yeah, I know. And I'm only 29. You're kidding. But yeah. <laughs> That's why I was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> they, I was thinking they must I'm be adopted. Sure. No, I'm sure. no, well, the, the older three are stepkids, and then the youngest one is mine. So, but oh. yeah, she's thirty-one. So nice. Wow. And she is her husband in the army, the so they're moving to Maryland. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. One of them's in Europe. He's in the military. One's in Ohio. One's in Washington D.C. And then my daughter's moving to Maryland. Probably oh, this nice. Month. Nice. Any grandkids? Nope. Well, okay. The, the <laughs> boys all have kids. They're my stepkids, but sometimes I forget about them. So yeah, there's like seven between those three boys. <laughs> Wow. And then she doesn't have any yet. Awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Soon enough. Soon enough. Awesome. Cool. Well, that's fantastic. I think you've shared a lot of great information for the drivers. I think that's been I was really excited to hear from you and get, get this under our belt so we can so we can connect. Maybe we can keep in touch and keep moving forward and, and hopefully maximizing what the drivers make is the goal. Yeah. So can I uh, plug my YouTube yeah. channel real quick? I was just going to say, would like to share your both of your channels with links on our website and uh, in the in the podcast video. But yeah, go ahead, let, fill us in on both both the channels that so you. So the Courier channel is called Courier Girl. That's the handle that I go by, and I've been doing that a couple years. Lots of good information on there. I'm really transparent about even how much I make. So there's videos on there about like costs and tips and all that kind of stuff. And I do job search videos in different cities around the country. So they're just screen capture, but it really helps people because I'm like, here's how you find a job. Here's how you connect with companies. Here's how you talk to them. So that's real helpful to people. I think I've mm. done like 55 of them now. And my okay. other channel is called Wealth Creation, and that's about getting your finances together, creating passive income and stuff like that. That's newer and it's a little slower, but it's growing. Cool. Wow. That's great. And just, just so everyone knows, there will be links in the in the video description and uh, we can add links onto the website so you can go right from there. Cool. cool. Awesome. That's fantastic. So yeah. Also, so our sponsor is is Rova. They're basically a, a career created platform. They're not in Ohio. Tommy, are they in Ohio? In Ohio yet? I think Imperfect yeah, Foods might be there. Gigs in Ohio. Yeah, might be. Yeah, we're starting with the yeah, yeah. companies out. Maybe a little slow a little on the slower side, slower but in Cleveland, it is. Uh, it's yeah. Courier created, courier owned, so it has that the mindset of the independent courier at heart, and the the prices are all for the deliveries are transparent, and they do like I said, it's it's built for the for the courier, so that's the mindset, that's what customers know going into it, and maybe just keep an eye out for that because there may be some stuff popping up it sounds exciting. out there that can spread the word on. Yeah, it. yeah. It, mm -hmm. it, if you basically look at it like your back office or your your software system for your company, Maria, and if you put the customer on, you can connect direct and maximize that money. Like yesterday, I was talking with Auto Parts distributors. We've got some floral distributors that we're doing. We've got some pharmaceuticals, prescription, food. So we're, we're getting out there. We've been working on it for a long time. And well, the first thing was, let's build the, the technology out which we've done, then let's build the driver base out and not download the app, stop making money. It's download the app and be part of the driver first movement. So that's the kind of drive mm. behind it. So, awesome. Good. And there's been, Oh, and there you go. There's been, a, there's <laughs> been other companies like, uh, companies who wanted to come go onto the Rover platform and get deliveries for their drivers, which kind of defeats the purpose because the the goal is to like get other the, courier companies, other courier companies, or 
or drivers who say, Hey, I got 10 drivers that, you know, that maybe they were doing, I don't know what kind of gigs they're doing, but that's defeating the purpose because the goal is to get all the money into the driver's hands, not, not keep it the same as it is with everybody to take a little piece. Oops. Sorry about that. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I really like that idea. Because yeah, most of us do work for it, most of us do work for courier companies that may be contracted with other courier companies that may be contracted. You may be three or four levels away from the actual actual customer. Yeah, it's too much. Too many people taking all those nickels. Too much money, or, yeah, or or more in right. some cases. Cool. <laughs> On that note, I do, I really want to thank you for coming on today. I think we had a, a great conversation. We've got a lot of great stuff that we can share with other drivers. For everyone else, be sure to check out the links on the YouTube videos down below in the description on the podcast, Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get podcasts, you can get those in the description of those. And also go to drivers to drivers.com and you can get them right off our website on our, uh, on our friends and community page. So Maria, Curry Girl, I want to thank you for coming on. We've really had a great time today and uh, we look forward to watching you progress through both channels and uh, hope to support you where we can and I look forward to hopefully chatting again in the future. All right. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Have a great rest of your day and uh, enjoy. Buckle up, drive safe.